Oh, this road is like prime. Yeah, because the houses are fucking huge, aren't they? This one's a monster. We're doing a couple there. So like the one he's bought, I think, is that a detached one down there that you went to or not? I'm not sure. Talking in and you talk us through numbers and stuff. Yeah, because like this was a bargain, but we had to complete in like, we had to complete in what, three weeks, I think. Okay, why? Um, it was just- Auction or not? No, it wasn't. It was owned by, I can't even remember what they call it, like a business that okay. just sells them because clearly- Oh, like a like a quick purchase business. One yeah, of them, Like buying cash companies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it was cash only and it was super quick and we just bought one down there. So the agent, because obviously this was a newish area for us, we hadn't bought loads of houses, so agent relationships and stuff. So it was good for him to give us this and then Nice. It and it was funded by, yeah. this was sold to an investor or? Yeah, so basically the investor were doing one for, which we'll show you after down there. They want to do more and on this road it's prime. So they bought three on this road. This was the second one and they can get access to cash quickly. So they're developers, they've been developers 20 okay. years, but they're in Cambridge. Um, so they've got investors that will lend them. Do I know them? No, nah, no, nah, they're not on Insta or anything like that. Um, they're just quietly developing in the background, doing new builds and barn conversions and stuff. Sweet, I'd love to do a barn conversion. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They do really nice or stuff. Or live in one at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because at the moment I live in an old fucking house, but it's not converted, it's just <laughs> right, like, okay, so refurb nicely, but it's 500 years old and it's freezing. So, <clears throat> cool. so what's the plan? The plan is, this one's a hard one, because I just said to them, buy it quickly, because it was 311. And it's worth a lot more than that. Fucking hell. It's fucking that cheap. Because we bought like three bed terraces just down there for like 310. Yeah. Uh, and one was a bargain at 270 because it was a dump. But what is this? As it this stands? is a four bed okay. terrace, large one. They're all three beds. But this is the same price. So I was like, buy it. If it's a six bed, numbers will still be good. Mm -hmm. That's worst case. No planning. Maybe a loft conversion with one bed up there. Wouldn't need an extension. So just buy it and we'll just figure it out later. Because it had to be done in three weeks. So. We've got a larger extension app in at the moment and certificate of lawful development for a window. I don't know if you saw the front of the property has like Ashley Villas written on it. Right. So it's like a feature. So we don't want to put a window in there, but you need a window in there to get two rooms in the loft. Okay. So it's either a six bed with no extension and no loft. Yeah, or a normal size extension basically. Um, or a seven bed if we can only get one in the loft without the window. So then putting in a window will give us two in the loft, which will make it an eight bed. Yeah, and what's the planning restrictions on going over a six bed? So assuming you could even get that under PD, you're still gonna need planning for the HMO yeah. element of it, right? <clears throat> yeah, and we could go straight from <clears throat> what it is now as a four bed straight up to an eight. But in this area, it's safer, I would think, for them not to say, no, that's overdevelopment, don't do that. For us to build it as a six and then apply from six to eight. Yeah. So then you're just asking for two rooms on an already built house that has these two magical rooms there that are over 10 square meters lovely with an ensuite so it's What's sort of not even really a material change so you shouldn't really mm. need for seven and eights but currently you do need full planning right yeah and and what are you kind of like investor led on that side like if they're like i'm sweet for six just get it done or are you kind of like wanting to push these things yeah like we had the discussion after we've completed on the purchase of here's rough build cost for six, seven and eights, here's what we're waiting on. If you wanna just get cracking, we can just do a six, churn it out and it will probably be worth about 650. So that's 311 to 650, numbers are still strong and, and the build will obviously of... be quicker and cheaper. So the spend will be for that 185, I'd say, for full gleaming, yeah. all chimneys out, everything looking yeah. glorious. Whereas, and with a, with a loft with one premium room in, where and you're confident on the end values how? When you start the bridging process that they've done on the other house, for example, you get the GDV pre-build okay. as a six bed because whatever it has planning use for at the time, they'll yeah. give you GDV. So but they, it's always they... a conservative GDV. Right. So that one we bought for 270 was pre-build GDV of 620 mm -hmm. before we started the build. Then when they come out and see it and see it's way better than they thought, then it should be 640 as a six. So yeah. then that one is a seven. So I was going to say, because higher. unless you give them a pack of your previous projects and what they're going to look yeah, like, correct. they're not going to really know, are they? Correct. And that's where like the, I suppose, the personal brand and people believe in that you're not talking shit and there's some sort of research yeah. that comes in. Because obviously over the years, that side of it's got easier. But equally, I spoke to Rory before, he gave me indications. I'll speak to a couple of valuers in the area. I'll speak to, I won't really speak to agents because they haven't got a clue. They told me like, yeah, you'll get at least 600 pounds a room there. And we just let the first three rooms and it finished on Friday. 
and it's now Tuesday. Um, three rooms are let for 925, 900 wow. and 850. Yeah. That's mental. And like the bridging GDV of 620 was based on 750 to 800. Right. So they think that's like top end. Whereas actually when you go back for the GDV for the mortgage, for the refi, um, and we show them basically 900 pound average across the rooms, technically that should be about 700 pound more per month. So what's that? 8,400 a year mm -hmm. by the multiplier of about 10 and a half. Okay, I was going to say, is it commercially valued there? Yeah. Is that what they're looking at there? Yeah. Okay. So if you get 100 pound more a room, 8,400 more a year, you should basically 10x that in terms of your yeah. uh, refi. So when it comes to, oh, should we take the chimneys out? Should we do an extension to make it bigger? The answer is typically if yes. If you know what the end is, Different. You're going to make it back amount, more because yeah. it's going to affect the rents, therefore it's going to affect the GDV. So that's yep. why this game is a lot more fun than doing flips or whatever way you're trying to cut costs and just do fun. it good enough. Is that what you call it? Well, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all right. We've got 21 houses this year. Yeah. So it's really not fun at the moment. Um, Any for yourself? Uh, no, not this year. What's the plan? Well, I suppose my plan, it's always, and we have people ask to do JVs and stuff. It's kind of long term, it's really good. Short term, if I'm doing JV, I put no money in, I own 50% of the house, I do everything as I usually would. So, but it's a battle of half of that cash flow is say 600 quid. Mm -hmm. But we make that on management really anyway at the back okay. end, 10% of the rent. Yeah. Plus I get paid the 40K to do it during the process. Plus if I ever was to sell this business or the letting side of the business, which I probably would think about in five to 10 years, we'd say 200 HMOs should be worth about 10 million as a 10X multiplier yep. of the lettings business. So it's sort of like the value of owning the house is good, but also- Disappears compared uh, to that. Yeah. Interesting. Just but equally quickly, in 10 years time, if, if owned- it No, it's the uh, skids next door. Oh, sure. Yeah. So if it comes through on the video. Yeah. <laughs> we can, da, 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 da. Well, it just won't be able to use it. <laughs> we can. Because um, it's copyright. Remove. Um, yeah, it will just remove cool. it and stuff. We'll obviously <clears> edit that bit out. Um, Travis. Yeah, so basically. Travis around. The plans will change. So we haven't done full plans yet because we don't know what we're doing. But essentially, this one's massive, so it's quite easy to lay out. Bedroom one there with an ensuite, which will probably be within that room rather than having to take any off this room, all the chimneys will come out. And then another room here with the keep, ensuite. Keep most of this, social housing. <laughs> yes, literally ready. <laughs> Ventilation through the walls. Perfect. This, proper classy. So That's this place has been a commercial unit, massive. then it's been a whorehouse, and then it's been a cannabis farm. Cool. So it's Good time history. to <laughs> bring it back to life. Uh, but essentially this is bedroom two with the ensuite yep. probably built out of the communal, just stud work into here. So we'll take some space out of here for the ensuite or just to make a bit of extra space for that room. And then oh, the so, communal so the will be ensuite here. ensuite will just jut out here maybe. Yeah. So that'll just jut out there and then the this will be down and the communal will run open plan to the back. Tight squeeze. God, it's so cold. Um, is this a lean-to? No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, this is part of the original house. So then as you come out, we could do a three meter extension to say here, well, was there, there one? That's two flats. Oh, is it? Yeah, so they've got... Oh. So in terms of the larger extension, the chance of them turning it down is super slow, uh, yeah. super low because they've done they it. got two flats, they're looking straight over the garden anyway. So we were talking about this in the car. The potential permitted development of turning a house into two flats. Yeah. Why, if that was the case now, would you have done that? No, because the numbers will still be quite a lot worse than as a HMA. Fucking told you. <laughs> it's facts. Like, um, you watch Samuel Lee's videos, they're like, this is how you're going to get rich, turn it into two flats. But like, you could probably get planning, easily get planning on this yeah. as two flats anyway. And I'm not going to do it because yeah. the bill cost is still going to be pretty hefty, but your GDV is going to be the cost of two flats. Whereas a commercial vow on a HMO is going to be, especially as an eight bed, it's going to be like 830 or something. You're never going to get 830 for two flats in here. Yeah, because my argument, even, even, if, even if it was a three or four bed family home and you converted it into two one bed flats, once you've done the works and you've dealt with the utilities and you've done this, that and the other, I don't think the values are going to be hugely like... No, because people have done that strategy for years with planning because it's quite easy to get yeah. flats through planning anyway. It's not, hence why they're making it PD because they always say yes anyway, so who cares? It's just nice to know I'm right all the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you are right. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but like, of course in London it would work. Then he was just like, well, what's a one bed flat in London work? What's the utilities? 
and it, it made sense probably just to leave it as a... Just... If you're buying a bargain and you're, you're going to do like a little flip anyway, I'd probably do that because numbers wise, it's going to be worth more than a house. But equally, that's only if you're buying it super cheap as a shithole that you know you've got that PD right to do it. But equally, I'd always opt for HMO instead. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, for the commercial aspect of it and the cash flow as well. Like but They've gone it out as well, haven't they? Yeah, so they've gone three meters. So we're looking to go five and a half meters, which is basically going to be- What's PD now? The garden. Three. Three. So three meters under PD, larger extension, anything from three to six. And if it's detached, you can go to- Four. Si oh, was it four? Four. Oh, or bigger. larger extension is to eight. Right. So, but that's only like they send a notification to the neighbors. If yep. they don't contest it, they'll just say yes. Right. Um, so you're going to basically go to that fence line and then you've still got a little bit of garden you can go to. two parking spaces at the back. Okay. And you're allowed to take up uh, up to 50% of the garden space, but that garden space can include like the front, the side, oh, okay. that bit at the back. Yep. So actually we can go, if we wanted to go pretty much to the fence, we could. Realistically, HMOs don't ever use the gardens anyway. No, it's a little space to have a beer or a fan. Yeah, that's yeah. They'd rather have parking at the back mm -hmm. there, rear access so you can bring your bikes in, that's prime. I don't know why a couple of houses we bought have had a <laughs> little mini vineyard in the yeah. garden. I don't know what it is about this area, but we've had loads of them. It's very yeah. strange. Um, but yeah, so the communal will basically span from here. Well, actually, I tell a lie. If it's an eight bed, there's going to be a bedroom at the back. Cool. So if we're going for larger extension, we'll have a bedroom at the back, which is pretty awesome that we've got rear access as well and a parking space. Nice. Um, I was going to get you to do the numbers, but it's freezing. So let's go upstairs. Yeah. Have you done any like short videos for like TikTok and stuff about the weed farm too? <sighs> Maybe one. To be honest, I'm I pretty lazy with the content these days. Pretty good. We got like 500,000 views on the last Just weed farm, grass, but it, it did it did have like actual bags of like soil, like loads of them everywhere. Yeah. But it does still smell, doesn't it? It does have a whiff to it. Kind of nice though. <laughs> when I was here with the investors before, we just found a little like bud on the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so in terms of the investors numbers. Yeah, let's do them. So you're looking at Purchase of 311, there's no finance costs. Build. I oh, said so they're buying the whole thing cash. Yeah. Legend. And they also raise money a couple of million quid at like 5%. Or <laughs> some billionaire they know. Wow. Because 5%, 5%, but. Yeah. Don't want to leave it in the bank. But 5% is absolutely insane. Yeah. And he's just said he wants to lend them like more. So they will just carry on doing more because this is like their personal pot. Yeah. So they're developers with it, bigger investors and stuff. Yeah. And basically run a building firm. Uh, so this is just for them to build cash flow because 20 years as a developer, they've never had cash flow. Yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. been development and development. That's why we get a lot of we get a lot of developers come to us with our like rented social yeah. deals because they'd rather chuck a hundred grand into us and it not be in their bank account going yeah. to 90, 80, and then just see it dwindle. They'd rather get it out of their way and then see money coming back in. Because if you're just constantly like they, they joke that they've been developers 20 years and they're always skint. Yeah. Because they're constantly just reinvesting yeah. the money. But then when you stop and yeah. go, oh, let's actually. Do they, do they like sell the developments as well? Yeah. Yeah. And they've just retained their first two flats ever, like in Cambridge, like that's penthouses nuts. or something. I bet they so they're they like enjoying that, a little bit. Well, that's the thing. If they have retained for 20 years, they would have made probably a shitload more money than they have developing and selling the whole time. 100%. And obviously a lot more tax efficient than selling the yeah. cap gains and stuff. Yeah. And 20 years developing Cambridge. Yeah, that's like yeah. prime. I like the idea of like, what do they say? Sell two, keep one, sell two, yeah, keep yeah. one. That, I think that's a good model to keep the, you can continue to do it then. Yeah, like if you can recycle all your money and stuff, then you can just carry on refine um, and keep everything, but. Unless the mortgages go up to seven or eight percent. Yeah, I mean, that just means <laughs> with this model, rents just go up. Yeah, but there's a cap to that. Is there? Yes. But then when nobody has any money anymore, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but someone's going to need somewhere to live. So if this isn't making any money as like a really high end HMO, then buy to let's the buy to let next door will be like negative a grand a month. It depends, though, because a lot of the held stock is historical and therefore they don't have mortgages on it. Like the house I live in now, if I bought it, would not wash its face for the rent I'm paying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's obviously had it for many years and has a 40% mortgage on it or something. Yeah. So the numbers still work. So I think a and lot a, a lot of the market is that. A, a fair chunk 
I just think like everyone needs somewhere to live. I've, the demand for HMOs has gone up given the interest rates and if they went up more. But if it's physically continue. impossible to pay the rent then, like which is probably not far off, for someone, for someone to yeah. pay a grand a month in a shared house, it probably ain't far off. Yeah, well, the people who are paying like 900, 925 down there, are fairly like. And into what, two grand a month? Yeah, probably. Like work at the hospital and stuff like that. Like nothing to. Like 50% of their income has gone on. Yeah, right. and that's sort of what would just happen. More which, which, which isn't so bad because you've got all your bills included and stuff. So that there's that like, that's probably not. It's that not. I don't think it's to horrific. Take, to lose fifty no. percent, and you work all the time. It is horrific when you actually think <laughs> yeah. about it, but it's probably not that far off of what you'd expect. Yeah, when your bills are all included, and it's like the ease of it. Mm. I think half of your income. And the way you do yours as well, it like almost doesn't even feel like a chair. Yeah, yeah, we will go in there after. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. But numbers wise, anyway, yeah, three eleven plus as an eight bed, I reckon build will be about. 230, pretty hefty build. Um, that's all in plus light furniture, 15 grand. Architect five, solicitor two and a half. Stamp, don't know, let's just say 10. Oh yeah, 300 grand. Yeah, so five, seven, three and a half, all in. You remember that? Yeah. And then GDV. If you looked at... You reckoned 800, didn't you? Well, 875 a room over eight over eight rooms, okay. 12 months, by the same multiplier. That can't be right. Oh, well, we 675. Yeah, 882. So 882k GDV it should be. And you're going to pull out 761. Potentially, yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, Stay which is 661. One. And I can't remember what they spent on your name. 675. Was it? Yeah. So pretty much all money. Basically all money, yeah. But they've got to pay me. So whatever they pay me, they're leaving. Yeah, plus, fine. Plus an extra. Which is going to... And then what's the cash flow on that? If they were to refinance, assuming. So did you say like 1,500 quid or something? Well, probably yeah, as an eight bed, 1,500. Okay. 1,400, 1,500 after management, mortgage and bills. Yeah. Mortgage, if they're refining as high as that, then the mortgage is obviously going to be pretty hefty each mm. month. But rates are a bit better for 70% loan to value now. Like 1% difference just for that 5% yeah. extra. They're being clever with it though, aren't they? They're like adding massive fucking arrangement the fees. <laughs> there was, yeah, well, there was one, everyone was like, it's 4%, 7% arrangement. <laughs> That's on an 880 grand better. house. Um, yeah, they're being a bit clever for the idiots. Why is property full of idiots? Because uh, a lot of people were just attracted to the money in it, I reckon. You see them in the auction rooms, don't you? Typically, that's like just where they kind somewhere. of breed. Yeah, it's mad. They're just completely blindly just buy shit. Yeah, I think they just think well, property developers make money, so yeah. you just got to buy them. And it do looks them up. bad. There must be money in it. Yeah, but actually, to make money in it, it's mm. quite a ball lake, and yes, you got to know a lot, especially to have it consistently. Um, yeah, to be a consistent. You can get. You, I think, company. especially when I started, it was like. The recovery market, so you couldn't lose. Like every yeah. well, I did, I yeah. still did. Yeah, you still managed. To. <laughs> I still did. You almost couldn't lose. Um, but people would get. You can get lucky in projects sometimes. Yeah. And and getting lucky for too long, which is why I'm actually glad I lost on the second project. Yeah. You can get lucky for so long, and then you don't get lucky anymore, and you're in a fucking some ginormous building. Yeah. And it all goes tits up, and, Someone, and you see yeah, that happen all the time. A ten years, ten years in, just went back. To yeah. yeah, 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 because because the luck runs out. Um, did you say this was commercial? At one point, yeah. Oh, at one point, but you yeah. didn't buy it as such? No, I bought okay. it as resi, so it's had a change of use in the past from commercial to resi. I was just wondering, would there be a potential um, break on your stamp duty? No. You might be able to backdate it. And it was vacant for a bit, and it's not really livable. I was mm. speaking to a couple of people recently. Yeah. But Everyone in the stamp duty reclaim world seems yeah, to just be an yes. absolute shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, everyone I've had a call with, I just don't trust. I would, I would say rather than the reclaim stuff, it's like get get the proper advice because I think if it was previously commercial, you might be able to get something back from that. Um, but anyway, and like the one they bought down there was horrific. Yeah. Not really livable, so I think we can claim something back on that. 
But again, you don't really give a shit because it's not your money. Yeah, but if I then just said, oh, here's seven grand for nothing, yeah. then they'd be delighted. And then you take Carry half. On. Yeah, um, and then I'm like, I'm taking <laughs> half plus, now I've done you a favour, you do another project. Yeah. Yeah, so basically a bedroom will be there where we just stood plus this. So just knock it through and build it out because this is wasted corridor space at yeah, the moment. Yeah, it it's is. Just dead. So what's so talk me through that again? Basically a bedroom here with an ensuite. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we're only going for three rooms on this floor. So the wall will come across there. Yeah. To get rid of. I mean, this that's corridor pretty space. much an ensuite, isn't it? Is that room not big enough? Well, it is big enough. We could do nine square meters, but it's better if they're thirteen plus an ensuite. It makes a massive difference to. Does it? The rent and the longevity of okay. the tenant and like just. So this is quite like social design. housing, you don't have to think about this stuff. Yeah. We're <laughs> making it really comfortable for the tenant, really, isn't it? For the as well. Yeah, because if it's 10 square metres, it's good. Yeah. But the difference in tenant between like 10 and 14 square metres with a kitchenette is like quite a it's jump. Actually, it's, yeah, I mean, 40% difference in size is a lot. Yeah. For a stud wall. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we'll just take out that whack a wall here because the stairs. You can either go round and up, but we'll just build these so it kites above these because mm -hmm. you've got the head height to come up the stairs, so it's all good. And in this big enough? No. Well, that's going to be a second bedroom with the ensuite over there. But then this is nowhere near as big as that all combined. No, to be fair, because we've only done draft plans, we might look to move this wall a little bit because this one's exceptionally massive. We looked for the rooms to be an equal size if we can. Yeah. Rather than some people have, yeah, 20 square metre room and a nine. Okay. But they're yeah, two yeah. different type tenants. Not yeah. too horrendously different. They're working professionals, but yeah, then you've just got all of this space. What was it all about sticking sinks in rooms and nothing else? <laughs> I know. Just so you can wash your hands. You see it all the time. It's bizarre. I've seen some with an ensuite, but it's literally like a shower just in the room, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cracks me up. <clears throat> but yeah, so all of this will just come out and be one room. Like all these holes in the wall. There's like no wall left. No, I tried to do a pull up on one and it ripped and poured all over me on video. <laughs> yeah, so that room will start as far that way as it can be, so that again, all of this is wasted. So just from there. So I've got you, so that you'll room. put another stud there and this will be room three. Yeah. All the way back and then you've already got your bathroom in there pretty much. Yeah. Well, the sole stack will be there, but that's about it. Mm -mm. But like you'll see the difference in size between this one and the next one. The next one's smaller, but still a, a nice size seven. That's more buy at two seventy GDV should be like seven fifty. Okay, so as a yeah, seven. The return wise, probably similar. Yeah. Right, he's probably gonna make noise talking to tenants in a minute, but um, we've just got to be a little bit conscious of this being tenanted by two people. We don't want to go in there talking about how much money is being made from the project. We're just going to have a little look. That is such a nice smell. That sounds that weird. It's like yeah. opening a box of new trainers. Oh, or ten <laughs> tennis balls. Yeah. Oh, it's primed. So, um, I suppose if they come in, just say we're on viewings. Yeah. Well, we, we'll just whiz around this. Just get a quick. Yeah, Every, there's two of everything, right? Because it's two of eight everything. bedrooms it's still seven. Seven. So the seventh bedroom is basically here in the mm -hmm. extension. Um, two ovens, two hobs, two fridge freezers, tumbler and a washer dryer, I think. Dishwasher by the sink. Uh, so you only need one sink if you're doing a dishwasher as well. And the missus does the Lettings. designing. Uh, now, nah, so we've got an interior designer now, basically. Oh. So you before, can tell, though, before we start difference. the build, we do. M and E plans and interior design. So, at the point of quoting the build, we know what we're going to do. And you don't emulate everyone the same. You do different everywhere. Yeah, and all the rooms are like slightly different and have their own quirks. And we give investors like a choice of five different types of design. Oh, they cool. usually go for the same few in terms of not too anything. Like yeah. we've got like an industrial theme that I want to do, but no one's chosen yet. But something that's just really maybe in London or Brighton or something, probably yeah. get away with it a bit more. Yeah, I suppose if you go too extreme, you can put people yeah. off. It's like you don't yeah. want the like love and hate stuff, do you? Yeah, this is like in the middle. Very nice. Um, so we did a larger extension. Oh, cool. We can get into a room. Nice. It's rolling in it. It's boiling in here. No one's living in it. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to turn a, this radio. That's down. a flex more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Just keeping the heating on. Well, the doors needed a bit shrinking because it got so cold for so long. The doors swelled up. Uh, so, yeah, this is all larger extension. So you can see where you're stood there. That's the extra three meters that we've done. Okay, yeah, cool. 
That this bit. place was a total wreck before. I call it Project Cat Piss. Like it, it was vile. It kind of doesn't matter though. When you're going back to brick, you, you, it's matter. better because it almost seems a shame when it's like a half decent house because you're then just paying more for it. I hate, I hate ripping it. out kind of nice houses. We've got one that we just bought for a good price in Portsmouth and it's actually quite nice, but they were happy to sell it for that. So we're like, okay. Yeah. But usually you wouldn't want to rip out all of it. Yeah. Um, like we'll probably sell the kitchen and stuff. It's actually in decent nick. Bit of space in the garden, rear access again. <clears throat> and for fire eggs, having a bedroom at the back, the other side of the communal, you usually need rear access. So that if you're get, running away, you can get out somewhere. Even though you'd think if the house is on fire, you'd climb over a fence. But, yeah, you would. Or kick yeah. it down or something. But you never know. You might have someone who's not able to do that, I suppose. Um, and how long have you been working in Paul then? Because you were doing... <coughs> you're still in Southampton. Start of the year. Kind of yeah, away. so like, our main areas are like Portsmouth, Southampton, Bournemouth and Paul. And now we're just getting into Bristol and hopefully Brighton. It's just hard to buy the houses. Yeah. But and we are ultimately Bristol? Right. that's gone up nuts, hasn't it? It's just nuts, numbers. Oh, really? Still? Numbers the, just a the, joke. The room, because there's a massive uni there, right? Yeah, there's two. Yeah. Um, and students, we never usually do students, but I think there's good. £800 a room, no bills included, is absurd. And you're buying the house for, say, like, the high threes, probably. Mm. But GDVs are nuts. It's Article 4 now, though, as of yeah, yeah. January. Oh, I thought it already up. was. So el parts of it were, but most wasn't. And right. now those other areas, which people have, must have been caning mm. quietly for the last few years, just taken over. Because yeah. you could do a three to six bed and the GGB, is, GGB will be so good, you can just keep going. I think. So about going more, this is south, but no, I'm just thinking near me, you've got Egham, which has the you know, big university there. Um, outside of that being stains and places like that it's still you can just permit under permitted yeah and the six bed hmo we're probably starting one in crawley okay been down to london earlier this week met the guy because he came down here and saw these and it was about whether he does a project with us on the south coast he lives in london or whether he turns his old house into a hmo so we're going to do that first i think what well, what's the decision for them because it shouldn't matter should it in terms of location it shouldn't matter really but unless they're making the decision based on wanting to no, and I'll typically drive doesn't, past I'll and check on it. Lion doesn't care. So it doesn't matter, they go no. where the numbers is. And it's like, if it's within a couple of hours of them, we never get anyone from up north doing it down south because yeah. you're just going to do it where it's cheap. You're not going to be like, what? I'm going to buy a house for 300 You say that, but then you, your capital growth down here is going to be massive compared. Definitely. I, I always say, like, I don't know why people give a shit about where it is. And then whenever a product comes up near me, I'm like, I want that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. You 100%. just kind of know. Like, especially, we were just talking about Stu. Um, took us around the bank in Twickenham. Like I, uh, loads of my mates grew up in Twickenham. Yeah. I go out in Twickenham, like, and that is like a building in the middle of the high street. Like I yeah, just want to cool. own that building. Like that's that's. You just get emotional about it, boy. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's Take emotion out of it. That's... But equally, who's to say it's all about the numbers anyway? Yeah, and and I do think the those buildings in those places are like landmarks. They're the ones that yeah. are gonna. You know, if, if you get stuck and you need to sell them flats, you're going to sell for the same price as anything else and sell quicker. Yeah. Um, or way, or for way more. I think there is an element of like when you're going for that level or like something that's overlooking the castle in Windsor or something, they're going to be like. And there'll be like a market level, yeah. but yours will just go for more because it's just unique. Like it doesn't really yeah. apply. Yeah. I the like unique the uniqueness of stuff. Um, I think that's why I fell in love with property to begin with and then got into really the most Boring dull thing shite. that you can do yeah yeah so i think I'll, I'll continue doing that until we've got enough to kind of start doing passion based product projects which are yeah emotionally driven in some way it still like, needs to make sense but yeah and like some people consider doing social housing and do this instead with us and yeah. they've looked into it just because of like <laughs> they like the thought of having something that looks like this yeah for a professional rather than social housing yeah Supported living is the other element of it, though, which I think not a lot of people realise the difference either. I probably don't. Um, well, supported living has an element of care compared to social housing, Where they which doesn't. In-house. Yeah. yeah. So so you could use something of this level and it could be someone with, it could be a, a group of adults with autism and then yeah. you've got one of the rooms is where the carer lives. Then it becomes a commercial entity, which then you can refinance based on commercial value, even if it's a four bed or a five bed. Um, and the rents, I've heard. Rents are higher. Nuts, yeah. Yeah. Because they've got a carer in there, yeah. but the rents are like mad. That's yeah, what I've heard. yeah, they are. Um, alternatively, it could go down to like um, a veteran who wants a three bed bungalow converted with everything lower so that because they're in a wheelchair, they need to be, have access to stuff. You can get involved in that. Obviously, it's very individual. Yeah, yeah. But like, 
the feeling you get from doing those projects. And again, it's all predictable as well. And you get crazy rents. Yeah, the predictableness of it is nice. That's what that's that's the reason I like it. I, I used to I'm I'm Mr. Unpredictable in life in general. Um, and I always used to be like, no, just take the risk. And now I'm just like, I want to know how much is yeah. worth, how much I'll <laughs> yeah. spend, who's going in there for how long. Um, but yeah, these are really cool projects anyway, I think. Um, what's the plan with it all long term? Are you wanting to go countrywide? Are you wanting to stick to these main areas? Because you've obviously, you were quite limited in where you were and then yeah, expanded yeah. to other areas quite quick. This was the, like the start of this year was the first expansion. Yeah. And it's gone really well. And now we just know what we need to do in the other areas. That I think like 10 areas would be good. Okay. 10 per area per year is perfectly manageable. Have like project managers and letting side in those areas. And for us, that's like 4 million a year profit. Carry on or get to the point where you just stop and... If maintain. I don't have to be involved in the business in five years, I'll probably keep it. But if, at that stage, if I'm not involved in the business, it's sellable Yeah. with a loads of investors obviously on the books who keep reinvesting yeah i think in like a year i won't need to advertise for investors anyway because it will just continue to roll with so your, your cash flow is essentially your management fees right mm. yeah in terms and of then sourcing your project management. from your yeah. sourcing yeah so and the letting just well. ticks over and that will just grow on its own no one touches any profit or anything so do, like you, that. do you manage any properties that you've not done no so we only manage ones that we've done so nice. then in you know maintenance if, wise and all the rest yeah, of it that it's been done tenants to a certain are good. level we've referenced them yeah and in terms of unpaid rent and hassle and people fighting and all that we're really picky with the tenants so long term letting agents just get so swamped with admin and just shit because they're taking on things where they're making 60 pounds a month on a buy to let in management fees but like it gives them loads of grief whereas okay. ours each one makes 550 600 pounds a month from a lettings perspective but once the tenants are all in Maybe there's a couple of messages a week about various things and that's it. Yeah, clever. So then as a sellable asset, as a business in the future, you couldn't want anything more.